Today we're going to learn how to make a book from a single sheet of paper. Your materials are things that you can find around the house. Today I'm using a pencil, a pair of scissors, some drawing supplies, markers, crayons, colored pencils, those will work, and a glue stick if you have it, but that's not necessary. The first thing we're going to do today is take our piece of paper and we're going to fold it in half. Hamburger style, if you're familiar with that. Turn your paper and take each side and fold it towards the middle, towards the folded edge. Flip it over and do the same to the other side. Okay, now you can open this back up, fold it in half like a card again, and then fold it in half this way. What we're doing is we're putting the creases into the paper. So I'm going to fold this up towards the folded edge, flip this over, turn this up towards the folded edge, and then I'm going to prop it up like this. Can you see how this? We're going to make one single cut, and it has to be on the edge that's folded, not on the edge that opens, but on the edge that's folded. And we are going to cut this fold right here, just to the middle. So I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut it right there to the middle and then I'm gonna stop. And that's all you need your scissors for. Fold this up, fold the other side up and then we prop it up like we had it, like this, but now it's been cut. Okay, now for the fun part. Put your hands on either side of the cut. And what we're going to do is we're going to gently pull our hands away from each other like this. When we do that, we're gonna prop the paper up on its side. So you try. I'll show you from this angle. Take it from either side pull it apart and prop it up like this. And we'll make a little X. You can crease these edges right here. And then we're just gonna close our book like this. Super simple. One cut and some folds and you made a book. Let's count the pages of our book. We have the front cover, page one, page two, page three, page four, page five, and page six. We also have a back cover. Here's an optional step. If you have a glue stick, you can glue these two pieces together. Where the paper opens up, glue that together. There's another one here. This is not required, but it helps keep your book together.
it's time to decide what to put in your book. Today, you get to be the author and the illustrator. When telling a story, I like to think of the sequence of events. Sequence means the order. A good story has a clear beginning, middle, and end. To help with your planning, you can make a storyboard. A storyboard is just a rough draft of your ideas. As you can see in my storyboard, I have written out the sequence of events. First, then, and finally. I have also drawn all six pages over here to represent the six pages in my book. Now, page one and two are connected. You can either draw one whole picture or you can draw two separate pictures depending on how long you want your story to be. I have shown this on my storyboard here. You can draw one picture here or you can draw a picture on page one and page two. And the same goes for page three and four and page five and six. When thinking of the story you wanna tell, there are many options. You can think about something that has happened in real life. You can use your imagination to create a fiction story. It could be a comedy. It could be a mystery. It could be something that you've done while you've been at home and away from school. What I like to do is brainstorm characters and a setting. Think about who your story is about and where your story is going to take place. I think today I'm going to use my imagination to write a fictional story. It's been really windy, so I'm going to take my inspiration today from the wind outside. So for my characters, I think I'm going to have a boy and his kite. And the setting will be outside where it's windy. Now to start my story. In the first box, I want to draw a windy day. So I'll write, it was windy. In the second box, I might uh, draw the boy deciding that he wants to go fly a kite. Boy flies a kite. So I think I'll draw a tree with the wind and some grass. Remember, this is just a sketch. In the next box, I might draw the boy saying, I want to fly a kite. For pages three and four, I think I'm gonna make one illustration that crosses both pages instead of two separate illustrations, like on pages one and two. Because I'm writing a fictional story, I think I'm going to use my imagination and make something that might not actually happen in real life. In this part, I'm going to write, the boy was lifted off the ground and flew away. So I'll draw the ground, just a rough sketch, and then I'll have my boy holding onto his kite and he is being blown away. Put some clouds, just a rough, rough sketch. For my last section, I think I'm gonna go back to two separate illustrations. Here, I'm gonna show the boy flying across the ocean. The boy flies across the ocean. And then on my last page, I'm gonna have him end up somewhere very far away. Let's say the Eiffel Tower in France. He flies 
all the way to France. So here I've got the ocean. And we'll have the boy holding onto the kite. It's so windy. And then here, he made it all the way to France. The end. Now that we've completed our storyboard, we can transfer our sketches into our final book. These boxes, boxes one and two, will correspond with pages one and two here, two separate drawings. On pages three and four, I drew one single drawing, so I'll draw that across both pages. And then on pages five and six, they are two separate drawings. Here, I have another book that I have not written on the pages so that I can transfer my sketches into my final book. On my front cover, I want to come up with a title. My story is about a windy day, so I think I'll call it a windy day. And maybe I can draw some wind and the grass and a field. Now on pages one and two, I'm going to take my sketches and I'm going to transfer them here to pages one and two in my book. So on, on page one, I had a tree. And here I can put in more details than I have in my sketches and take a little bit of extra time because this will be my final product. So we'll have the wind here and I have um, some grass. And on this page, I'll put the boy holding the kite. I will continue each of these steps until I have finished taking my sketches and putting them into my final book. After that, I can use markers, colored pencils, crayons to put in any finishing details into my book that I made out of a single sheet of paper. Here's my finished book, A Windy Day. Here I decided to go ahead and combine pages one and two together into one illustration. That's the great thing about a storyboard or a rough draft. You can always make changes to your rough draft depending on how you want your final product to turn out. So in a windy day, my boy is holding a kite here. There's wind blowing. Here he gets blown off into the distance. He's crossing the ocean and he ends up in France. The end. You can use a single sheet of paper to make a book and a storyboard to plan out a very simple story to put into your book. Have fun creating it. Hi, my name is Miss Diviazzi and we are continuing some art lessons for you while we're out during this time. Um, got a pretty cool lesson today. Um, it's kind of fun. Can't mess up. If you do mess up, just start over again. I don't look for perfect and no one else should either. Just look for interesting. That's what you want to see is something that's interesting. What I do here, you aren't necessarily supposed to copy exactly. So, I'll set you up with materials first. You can see I have some jars here that have color in them. This is not watercolor. It is food coloring. When I first start setting it up I have very little water in there and then I put about three to six drops depending upon how deep of color that I want it. You can always add more drops later or you can always add more water but don't get a bunch of water at once. You can always add to it. The other thing I have are q-tips. These are things that you can use at home. Um, or that you have at home that, that you don't necessarily need all the fancy brushes that artists have and whatnot in order to do artwork. Um, we also did the salt technique, which is you take salt and you sprinkle it on the wet on wet technique. And then we did the splatter. We're going to take the splatter one and we're going to work into it. So we're not just going to do the splatter, we're going to make it into some type of design or art. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to set up our 
station and put paper down. Um, these came in the mail. Lots of us adults get junk mail. Um, before they scrap it, burn it, shred it, tell them you need it, that to use you know, for your art. You want to lay it down so you don't get the tables messy. Speaking of messy, always clean up your mess. If you leave a mess for your parents to clean up, odds are they're going to say, I really don't think you should be doing art in my house. So, you always need to make sure that you clean up after yourself. Alright, I also have a little bit of water here. Um, I don't use much of it, but we're going to start with the splatter technique first. And this lesson is the Durr Monster. Dun, dun, dun. Alright, so... Um, when we are working with this, it's, it's, we're blowing paint that's going to go all over the place. You can also do splatter technique if you would like to. But we're going to be creating germ monsters that are going to be quite unique and unusual. Um, so I've got my Q-tip and it's a good thing to possibly get your Q-tip wet first in water and then get your color on it. Tap it on. And you can use just about any paper, um, a poster board, a watercolor paper. Um, then what you do is you just have to kind of bend down close to it and blow very hard. Okay, so you can control it a little bit. Um, but I like it because you can't really control it. It's not one of those precise, ooh, I have to do perfect type stuff. Um, we'll leave that for the uh, math people. In art, we can be a little bit more creative, and our goal is to make it look interesting. When you're creating art, you want to create something that somebody hasn't seen before. That's what I think are about is brilliant about kids and their artwork. Is I look at their artwork and I've never seen it before. It's different. It's unique. Uh, makes me look at it differently. So we're going to be lurking, looking at these germ monsters a little bit differently because we've had to be dealing with germs and washing our hands and making sure we keep away from other people so we don't spread the germs and or don't catch the germs. And, you know, it's kind of a little bit trying for us all. So this is a fun little getaway. Um, all right, so I'm going into the yellow. I'm going to tap it on there. And then I'm going to blow. Alright, so those two colors blending together are starting to give me some green. And yes, I basically didn't tell you this before. I told you in the last video. These are just primary colors. Nothing fancy schmancy. Alright, next thing I think I'll add just a little bit of red. And maybe tap it in here. And I'm kind of puddling it up, so it's kind of really puddly, so I can blow it across the paper. All right, I just love this. I don't care how many times I do it, I just love to do it. All right, so that's our first step. Now, this has to dry. If by chance you can't stand it, which is what I'm kind of getting to, um, you can blot it if you would like. I'm going to blot it here in the center, which means I'm not taking it and rubbing it across. I'm just lightly setting the paper down and picking it up. I'm going to leave these wetter and let them dry on their own because I kind of want to start. I'm excited about starting the germ monster. All right, next thing is you're going to be looking at your artwork and you're going to determine what does my monster look like. Um, here are a few of the others that I've done. And I think I might let this one rest while I start on this one. If you get have the time, and we all have lots of time right now, you can carefully trace around every little line with your marker. Um, if you have a thin marker, they work best. If you don't have a thin marker, a pencil might work okay. Uh, fat markers don't tend to do as good. 
um, <laughs> fascinating that I have no crayons in my house, but I have tons of these markers. Which tells me that's what I use mostly of. Um, maybe the schools will open enough for me to get some more materials from there, but I kind of like being able to use materials at my house. Because like you, I'm kind of stuck here with whatever I have in my cabinet and how creative I can get with it. So maybe that's what mainly my lessons will be of things that you can find around your house and still be creative. Alright, so you can watch me do this all day long. I don't think I'm going to use any more, more of my time than I have to to finish this. So I'm going to start creating the creature. So it kind of looks alive. Um, has some interesting things coming down here, which tends to t maybe maybe those can be I don't know something else. All right, so I'm gonna start what might be the body of my bug. of my germ monster, my bug. Alright, so you can see, you can trace it around. Everyone's going to be different, which is great. Now, you determine what parts your germ might have. If you're one of those scientific kids and you really like to look at science, um, with your parents' permission, you could go on and Google what does a germ look like. And then you can be inspired by what that looks like. Some of them have some absolutely drop-dead gorgeous colors to them. Um, some of you all might to do like to do, and I've done this in my classes before, what I call princess monsters. Now my princess monsters happen to have all these pretty colors. Oh, they're gorgeous. Yeah, pretty princess has pretty pinks and purples and might even have a little bit of glitter on it. Just fabulous. But don't you let that germ monster fool you. Princess monsters, they might look pretty. They gonna make you sick. So, be sure and wash your hands good. I like to tell kids, it's when you're washing your hands and you put soap on, you're making a slip and slide for the germ wash up your hands and then you can um, you can then go in between your fingernails your fingers and you make this wonderful slip and slide and then you let the water wash it off they say usually to sing happy birthday you can sing it to yourself or out loud doesn't matter um, but you make the slip and slide and all the germs go slip sliding down the water all right, so we've got this going here. Now I need to maybe put some, I don't know, some kind of feet on it. Yeah, maybe some kind of little hooks or claws or, I don't know. The, I'm not sure what this lends itself to. I guess it needs to have some more feet thingies to it. Almost looks like a chicken foot. I'm just kind of letting it evolve. Now, if you happen to get inspired and want to do it kind of what I've done, that's okay too. Sometimes we need to be creative and work together. I think I might run some eyeballs up here. Yeah. Ew. Yeah, there's an eyeball. Careful, it's looking out for you. It can watch itself go down the drain, right? So you can work patterns into it. Um, any kind of patterns at all. Can't go wrong with it. Should I put an eye over here? Let's see here. Yeah, I think I'll get creative and put an eye over here. Yeah, ugly germ monster. Yeah, that looks kind of crazy. Um, should it have, I don't know, maybe a mouth of some sort. Well, this would be a good one if you've done Zentangles to work in some Zentangles into it. Oh yeah, 
Um, maybe I should have it walking on something. Okay. So, doesn't take a lot of pre-thought on what your monster is going to look like. You're actually doing a technique and then you're allowing your technique, which is the splatter technique, to take you on a journey, an artistic journey. Something you've never seen before. Alright, um, so you can start this yourself. This one has dried now. Kind of, it's still a little wet up here in the corner. It's alright. But I could, I could start with maybe just a Google Eye. You can also do collage work by gluing things on there. They're not going to be too scary. It's alright. We don't always need to have scary stuff. Maybe I'll put one of those eyes maybe coming off of here. Oh yeah, that's weird. And germs are weird as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Right. Trace around it. The more you trace it, the more interesting it's going to look. Great. Have your parents do this along with you. It's a lot of fun. Tell them to relax. Don't worry about it. Just make it interesting. Sometimes if you're not good at writing, you're kind of still messy with your letters. If you trace lines you are sending messages to your brain, to your fingers, and trying to stay as precise as you can. Tracing is a good way to train your brain to go where you want it to go. So you can learn a lot from art. You just don't realize it. You just know you're having fun. The minute you put one line down in your artwork, you are learning and you are challenging yourself and you're having to think, what do I do next? How do I do that? Where do I need to go with it? Is it working? Is it not? You're constantly critiquing yourself and figuring out how to do it better. If you're ever in my class, um, then you're used to not being able to throw away any of your artwork. You have to work through the problems, figure it out. All right, so that's my other germ monster. Um, I might like put some alien toes on it. Give him some toenails. Hunt that party. Alright. Something else to walk on. Alright. That's about all I'm going to do with this lesson. Uh, enjoy making your own germ monsters. I do suggest that maybe you make three of these splatters. That way you have a choice as to which one you're going to do. And try to make them all unique and creative and uh enjoy don't forget to wash your hands stay safe bye